All right, so we're here with our fourth Striper Season update brought to you by West Marine. This week, we have Andrew Burke on here. Andrew is a tremendous photographer, videographer. He films and edits a lot of the videos you see from our On the Water Angling Adventures that appears on NBC Sports Boston to these uh, Striper Season updates. I have to say nice things about him because he edits all the videos of me. Otherwise, he won't make me look cool. Um, but anyhow, Andrew, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining us this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, Andrew and I just got back from a uh, from a road trip to New Jersey. We did a little tog fishing aboard the Norma Kay party boat and then snuck in our first stripers of the season from the, the shore of the Raritan Bay. Andrew, how, uh, how was that trip? I know it was a bit of a whirlwind. Great to get on the board for the striper season. I know you got some through the ice, but that was kind of, I guess, for both you and me, the kickoff to our, uh, our surf season. And it was a good night. It was like um, just really simple fishing. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of intel. We knew that this Jersey coast was going to be fishing pretty well, but we just went out there with minnow plugs and just reeled them back slowly and uh, both got, you know, around a 28 inch fish each and got out of there. So it was a good day. The initial plan was to spend a couple days down there and fish with our friend Captain Rob Radliff on his boat on the Raritan Bay. Weather kind of messed that up a little bit for us. We got out for one evening, but did talk to Rob about, you know, the state of the striper migration, at least through the Raritan Bay. He said between moons right now, the fishing had slowed a little bit. He was waiting for the full moon, which is coming up next week, to bring in another wave of stripers. Uh, Andrew, didn't he say he thought that maybe the fish that had been there had started to run up the Hudson? Yeah, so we were fishing right in the shadow of New York City, which is really cool. And he actually pointed to the corner and right right at the bridge where they would all, you know, head up the Hudson and spawn. But from from what I got from him, it seemed like they they were probably about to spawn. So they were probably going up the Hudson right now and spawning and getting ready to shoot back north. Yeah, we did see a couple photos this week that uh, people tagged us on Instagram of some very big stripers caught in the Hudson River this week. Also some big stripers coming out of the Delaware River. So in addition to the fish being up the, the rivers of the Chesapeake spawning, starting to see that in some of our rivers right here in the Northeast as well. Uh, as for New England and migratory fish, I, I think the weather kind of dampened a lot of uh, a lot of efforts this week. It got really cold again. I mean, there was snow in Western Massachusetts and uh, I didn't hear too much more on the striper front uh, did you hear anything? No, I haven't heard too much, you know, in terms of like forward progress of the striper migration, at least around Cape Cod. But one of the things that I took away from the shoot with Rob Radliff was that really you want to be focusing on those those mud flat bottoms and that's going to hold a lot more more life. Like one of the things that I get when I'm shooting these 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 shows and content is that I get to watch exactly what's happening exactly what we're doing and i'm just watching i'm not actually fishing so i get to look at it through a pretty detailed lens one of the things i noticed with rob is that we were never fishing in more than 15 feet of water we were fishing over dark bottom the entire time really not a whole lot of structure it was really key to fish on those dark bottom mud flats to you know hone in on the life yeah and he said when those fish first show up when they first hit the raritan they are looking for that shallower water and to me i kind of think winter time colder water you picture the fish being hunkered down, but he said that those fish are looking for any little bit of warmer water. So they're heading actually shallower to these muddy flats. Like you said, that's also where all the bait's going to be too. The, and the, the main bait down there right now is Atlantic Menhaden, adult size bunker. And they were all over the bay. For you and me as surf casters too, that's really exciting because, you know, we, a lot of the times we're catching these fish in, in 10 feet of water or less. So that's water that's pretty accessible, whether you're in a boat or from the shore. Exactly. Exactly. I can't wait for more of those big fish to start heading our way in uh, New England here. But I'm kind of hoping to get back down to Jersey again and, and kind of finish what we what we started there. That was a little bit of a tease. It wasn't quite the full send that I was hoping for. One of the things that uh, intern Jack Burke, who was also with us helping us on this shoot, said was he mates on the uh, fishing vessel Butterball. And he said that the Raritan Bay hasn't even really picked up yet. You know, the fish are kind of the fish, the Hudson stock is kind of moving up into the Hudson now, but the Chesapeake fish and the fish that spawn further south haven't actually reached that area yet. So the really big fish and good fishing is still yet to come in that area too. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we got the whole season ahead of us pretty much. And speaking of the season coming up, the Striper Cup is beginning in, man, a little bit over a week next Saturday. Is that right? Yep, a week from today. So that would be May May 1st. May 1st is the kickoff of Striper Cup 2021. And Andrew, in addition to all he does on the filming and editing side here at On the Water, also works very closely with the Striper Cup. Andrew, tell us a little bit more about what you do 
with the Striper Cup. Every- so last year, I was actually going through all the submissions on a weekly basis, and we go through every single submission every single week. And the best part is, every one of those submissions, regardless of the photo, regardless of how you catch the fish, they're all eligible for prizes. Oh, it's great. And yeah, we give away, I mean, we talked a little bit about this before, but how many prizes are we giving away on a weekly basis during the Striper Cup? So we have the grand prize, which is the North Coast boat, and then we have our 20 sets of weekly prizes. And there's three ways to win each week, and that is the boat and kayak division, the shore division, and the youth division. There's also one more division, which is the Coast of Sunglasses photo contest. And so in total, there are four ways to win, essentially, each week. So... Walk me through how is each prize for the first three categories you mentioned, not the photo contest, how are those prizes selected? So it's a weighted lottery system. Each week you're allowed to submit up to three fish and there's, you also have to enter lengths with each of the fish and every inch of striped bass is one entry into this weighted lottery. So the total amount of inches you submit represents the total number of entries into the lottery. So if you catch three 30 inch fish in one week, that would be 90 entries into the lottery, which gives you a better chance than someone who just submitted one 12 inch schoolie. That'd be 12 entries or three 50 inch fish. That'd be an incredible week. But so that way, everyone has a chance to win. If you fish, if you catch more and bigger fish, you have a better chance of winning. But that's not to say a 12 inch schoolie could win. And more often than not, it does. Over the course of the tournament, I imagine there are some weeks that are very highly competitive and other weeks where there aren't as many entries, where you'd have a, almost a better shot of winning. So if, you know, if, you were, if I were joining, I wanted the best odds of winning, what tips would you give to me for, uh, for submitting fish? I would say it's a lot better to submit fish evenly over the course of the 20 weeks versus just posting what would be a banner week. We see a lot of participation in weeks four through eight, and that's really kind of June. You know, it's go time pretty much up and down the striper coast. So that's when everybody is sending in fish. So a lot more inches of striped bass submitted each week. While you might also be able to submit more, you're competing in a bigger pool of total striped bass fishing. Yeah, you've got more competition. Exactly. The best way to increase your odds is really competing evenly throughout the entire season. So... If I was going to look for a week that I was really going to focus on, or a stretch of weeks to focus on the, to have the best odds at winning a prize, what weeks, what, what periods of the Striper Cup would give me the best shot? I would say weeks 10 through 18, we definitely see a little bit less competition. You know, that's kind of the dog days of summer, so maybe the surf fishing isn't quite as hot as it was during the spring. You know, there's just slightly less competition. So if you're submitting fish throughout the entire tournament, throughout the whole 20 weeks, you're going to have a pretty good chance of winning in that you know, 10 to 18 week range when there's not quite as much competition. And then 19, 20, that's when we're getting towards Striper Fest. So everyone's excited. Everyone's kind of, you know, getting in on the fall run too. That's when the fish are pushing back south. Week one is also a great week to compete. You know, we see a huge jump of participation from week one to two usually. So that very first week that Striper Cup is open, is also a great time to get out there. Awesome, man. And do we know what the prizes are? The prizes are announced at the beginning of each week, is that right? In the weekly e-blast, we actually announce the prizes ahead of time. So that way you know what you're actually competing for. So if you see a prize that really stands out to you, you want to fish hard that week, you're going to have that that heads up time to get out there and catch some fish. So that's how you can win the three prizes in the boat and kayak, shore, and youth divisions. So Andrew, for that Casa Del Mar photo contest, what are your tips for having, you know, for taking a standout photo? there that has a good chance of winning. Right. So first and foremost would be good lighting. We want to see the fish well lit. We want to see the surrounding scene well lit too, you know, that conveys the mood. For instance, we had a great photo from week seven of the 2020 Striper Cup from a uh, young surfcaster, striped bass hunt, Finn Hawley from the North Shore. And he had a great shot of a big striper in the fog. You know, it really kind of conveyed that surf, North Shore, foggy, early morning kind of kind of mood. And it, ju- it was just a standout shot that week. So he got that uh, the pair of Costa sunglasses that week. But we're really looking for that fish to be well lit, the scene to be well lit. And um, that can really help your chances and really makes images stand out to us. And you don't need professional camera equipment to do that. I mean, you can probably, I- I'd say probably most of the weeks are one with uh, photos taken on smartphones. Is that right? That's exactly right. Most, the vast majority of winning shots usually are actually just smartphone shots and there's a lot of tools on your smartphone that can actually really help you take a better picture that 
kind of often get buried in the menus of the phone itself. One of those is the photo timer feature. So for solo anglers, guys fishing out there by themselves, the photo timer is a great way to make sure you're handling the fish well and you're able to set the phone down, put that 10 second timer on, and then hold the fish out in front of you and get a great shot. That's a great tip there. And how about the portrait mode? Do you think that's a good one? What, I mean, some of the other settings there, HDR. I... Oh yeah, HDR, HDR mode really helps because that can kind of, you can that way you can see the fish. And especially this actually really comes in handy in sunset shots, which win a lot of the time, you know, it can be a small fish. It doesn't have to be a big fish. It can be a small fish in front of a gorgeous sunset. That HDR mode will help bring out the clouds and the detail and colors in the sky while also keeping the fish well lit too. Now, one of the shots, it's probably not going to win and it, it makes it tough. And I understand why it makes it tough for those shots where people like to blur the backgrounds and pixelate the backgrounds, unless you're doing it in a, you know, on a, in a high level Photoshop kind of way. You know, I would try to find a, a way to shoot it against a nondescript background rather than send us something in where you've, you've gone and scribbled out the trees and the, the buildings behind you is to conceal your location. Right, right. So, and plus, if you kind of, you can, there's always a way that you can get the water essentially behind you and probably get a pretty nondescript background in high profile spots like that. So that, a conscious photo coupled with portrait mode that will blur the background slightly for you in the camera, that's going to be a great substitute to actually going and scribbling out the trees. And the other thing, you know, everybody should keep in mind is if you are going to be taking photos with that in mind or just taking photos for any reason, have it set up beforehand. Before you land the fish, kind of have a good idea of what you're going to do and have, have your camera or your phone handy. You want to make sure that your fish isn't there gasping for oxygen for, uh, you know, five minutes while you make sure you get the right shot. You know, you want to do it quickly. You want to be able to release that fish in good health. Um, that's a, a very important part of the striper cup for us. And it's an important part of striper fishing everywhere right now because we really want to take good care of these fish, help them bounce back. So have your phone ready, have or your camera ready, and you know, kind of think about how you're going to take that photo before you even hooked the fish and landed it. Exactly, and that's a great tip. Plus, fish with a buddy, fish with someone who can take that photo for you. And that's kind of segues to the other thing that we're looking for in the striper cup, and that's well-handled fish. You know, as a catch and release tournament, we really want to promote proper handling and conservation of the striped bass. So we're really probably not going to pick a photo that ever mishandles in any way a striped bass. We're going to be looking for those photos that really show proper striper handling techniques, you know, not touching the eyes, the gills, supporting the belly when you're holding it up, and ideally holding it over water too. We want to be making sure that fish is safe and can swim away well. Andrew, that's all. those are all great tips right there. And I know the striper cup occasionally has these almost pop-up contests within the contest and other more opportunities to uh, to get prizes because we have a lot of great sponsors a lot of times they'll give us some extra prizes that we'll give out and and try to find creative ways to do it what was one of the examples from from last year so we have a bunch of great sponsors on board for 2021 they're going to be listed right here and the beauty behind striper cup is that it's a five-month tournament so those sponsors are able to kick in more prizes randomly here and there throughout the tournament in addition to the weekly prizes yeah, I know Casa Del Mar sent in some striped bass hats last year as part of a catch and release tournament in the Striper Cup. It's not this one. This one is actually a specific striper. It's it's a got a great graphic on there. I'm sure, we can put a picture up of it. But how was how do we decide who was who was going to win those hats? So this was kind of a pop up competition on social media. We used the Striper Cup release contest hashtag so people could follow along and submit their videos. And then after the week period, we sent them around the on the water office and we all kind of picked our favorites and five stood out. And those five lucky winners won a, a Costa hat. Awesome, man. I can't wait to see what kind of pop up contest we have coming up this year. Can't wait to see some of those photo contest entries coming in. And it's just a week away. So, Andrew, thank you so much for filling us in on how to win a prize in the 2021 Striper Cup. I'm sure you're going to be back on here. I know we're going to be doing a lot of surf fishing coming up this season. It was great to get out earlier this week with you and catch our first surf stripers of the year. Hopefully the first of many. And we are going to be putting up one of these every Friday on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe. Friday is also the day we post the new Striper Migration Map on onthewater.com. You can check that out there. Thank you for checking this one out, and we'll see you next week.